Would I listen to Izzy Presley? Ooh, ooh, not if he was the last disc jockey on earth, honey. So you're bored, are you? I've come here to break your monotony. Let me have my piece, because I'm shooting with this one, folks. I don't care, man. The unscripted, uncensored, loose cannon of commentary. Why did you say that? Why? Why? You come out with stink like that? Poop. Poop mouth. Poop out of your mouth. See, son? Old legends never die. They just lose weight. Like a legend and an out-of-work bum look a lot alike, daddy. I've got a midget friend, an albino friend, and another friend who thinks Lord of the Rings is real. Together we call ourselves the Unfuckables. When time is in, let the fun begin. Body touch. You got you an asshole, man. <laughs> hello, Hollywood. Hello, world. And hello, my loyal minions. It is good to see you. And it's always good to be seen. My name is Izzy Presley. And welcome to the very first another fucking podcast of... 2021 it is going to be a gem oh my god we have dirty rotten filthy stinking rich versus uh night songs versus look what the cat dragged in and i have an amazing panel set up for us um you know all the things uh social media at real is all the way across the board twitter instagram and facebook and of course the show page is another app podcast and uh merch all that shit's available and uh, before we get into it, I want to do this because you heard the bell, the 10 bell salute at the beginning of the show. Um, that happens when there is a death, usually in the professional wrestling world, and there actually was with um, um, Brody Lee from AEW, and actually I played it for my friend Kurt Blazing. Thursday, he had a heart attack, Saturday morning he died, and I love Kurt to death. He was an old school musician, old school fucking sound guy, and this this is how Kirk was. I got called to be merch bitch for LA Guns and at the red carpet in San Cloud and, and uh, Kurt was running sound. And LA Guns came in, I was setting up the merch bitch booth and you know, they got their sound checks done. They got done, the opening band shows up and it was a smaller stage and the drummer goes, so uh, is he gonna move his set back or where am I gonna set up? And Kurt just looked at me and he goes, they're not here to see you. You have three options. Set up in front of them, set up on the floor, or get the fuck out. Those are your three options. And he set up on the floor and went along. So here we go. DB Curtis, Kurt Blazing, this is for you, pal. I miss you, buddy. I'm going to pour one. I'm pouring one for your, Do it. your fallen comrade. Going, going three fingers deep. There you Atta go. kid. Hey. hey. Oh, We're going Rocktail right. style. Fuck yeah, I love it, man. I love it. I, uh, I was uh, annoying my listeners on uh on new year's eve day with uh four hours of rock tales it was beautiful it was beautiful that's nice of you to do yeah exactly you know some of them can put up with the with the uh constant swearing but that's okay you know you you just you just got to look at the person okay this this old motherfucker is not going to want to hear fuck every other word so i might change it for this and then go back to it i'm good but yeah check out rock tales uh ahmed zappa is back uh the doc the uh your doc about your father how's that going uh seems to be getting good response yeah people seem to be enjoying it and i'm in total you know gratitude mode because it took a long time to to make took about six years and people seem to be liking it and and uh it's it's pretty emotional you know i've seen it so many times and it still chokes me up and i mean i am i it's just shitty that the world is the way that it is uh, but I think maybe in many ways people are discovering the doc because of it. And, and so that's one, I guess, a, a tiny sliver of, of the bright side of, of uh, you know, it's important to me that people discover my dad and learn a little bit more about him. And, um, but, you know, I just, I'm, I'm in total appreciation mode, you know, and um, I, I still, I don't know what to say. I'm still processing. I hate that you lost a friend. You know, it seems to be happening all the time. And I just, I, I just want 2021 is going to be better. I got to believe that because it's been, a, you know, last year was really tough and, and I'm happy to be here with, with, um, you know, my new friends here, you know, Brent, Chad, Paul, <laughs> thank you for inviting me, Izzy. I love doing this. So Dude, you're always welcome. You're always welcome. And uh, really quick, uh, people want to watch the doc. Where is it available? 
Oh, you can you can find it on uh, you know Apple TV and Amazon and all of those places. Um, it's it's just called the you know the Zappa movie. Uh, Zappa is the name, and you know it's. I hope you enjoy it. I hope I hope your listeners um, learn something new and uh, and know what it what it means to be a modern day composer and sticking to your guns and being an artist and looking out for everyone. So you know. All right. All Thanks. right. I, I, I haven't watched it yet, but I really do look forward to seeing it. Uh, Britt Panella. What's TJ happening? Britt. Blackboard Jungle has returned. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. And that documentary is amazing. It's one of the ones my buddy Jeff plays guitar in Smashing Pumpkins, and we were watching it. It's one of those ones you call each other up, checking things and rebuying albums the whole time you watch. That's, that's, there's a lot of documentaries, but that's the one right now that really counts. That's really cool. Don't you think it's 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 kind of sad? Like Izzy's simple human brain couldn't comprehend the complexities of the doc, right? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I don't think that surprises I, anybody on it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, Izzy, 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 Izzy's, Izzy's simple brain gets confused when he has to count past four. So <laughs> yeah, that's why I say I can't count past Peter Chris. <laughs> you know, Chad Stewart, faster pussycat. Moto Happy New Year, everybody. Merry fucking New Year. How are you? Everything good? I'm good. Yeah, everything's fine. You know, fucking, I'm still alive. It's all that matters. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? And from Metal Edge Magazine, uh, Paul Gargano has returned to tell us that he is better than us. I don't know where you got that from. No, I, just no. said I'm, I said I'm better than you, not everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, I saw that picture with the beard in front of your fucking record collection. It's like, that's an I'm better than you photo. Oh, no, that was actually just a showing off the beard before I shaved it off. Because at the start of COVID, I said, I'm going to grow a COVID beard because we're going to be out of this in three months. And my longest beard was nine weeks on the road with Crown and Cool once. So I was like, I'm growing a COVID beard. And at the end of three months, I'm cutting it off. And then it got to be like four months. And I said, I can't do this anymore. I hate it. I was like, ah. So that was just the last picture before I just went clip, 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 shave. And then this is, I'm Italian, so this is like four days. Ah, nice, nice. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is four days, and it's still not as bad as my back. So I'm like, <laughs> wow. Does anyone think about, like, it's, I'm like staring at you, uh, your hideous face, Paul, with that beard. And um, does anyone else think that you should legally change your last name to Gargamel so that... <laughs> That was um, that was literally what everybody called me in grade school. So good on going back to third grade. Good job, Ahmed. <laughs> I admit, I, Ahmed, I was bummed because when I was putting together that ad mat, um, I wanted to find your picture from Playgirl and use that photo, but I, no one needs to ever see that. <laughs> <laughs> but then it would have made me like search Playgirl and that probably wouldn't look bad if i died well, it auto pop really and you're i mean it comes right up on your computer you just <laughs> all, play girl pops right up, is <laughs> all right joe let's bookmark get... <laughs> <laughs> let's get to the matter at hand we have our very first ever three-way dance and uh it is dirty fart what, dirty farting dirty rotten filthy stinking rich versus night songs versus poisons look what the cat dragged in and uh the original consensus when i first put the idea up is everybody's like night songs is going to dominate this i don't know um i have gotten word from the championship committee of stan uh wally carbo and stanley blackburn that this is how the uh, the scoring is going to go um it's going to be song versus song versus song track one versus track two versus yeah, yeah we we get that so track and we're going to put them in order this song the second and the third and is going to be three points for the first place two points for the second place one place for the one point for the third place paul is going to actually try to keep score on this because i can count higher than izzy this is true <laughs> this is true so we my, will my have him in to help because my dog said it can count higher than you too well, that's by the way, the dog is well. sitting on my lap because that stops him from barking, so he's happy. That's well, don't feel bad. I have a I have a male pillow st staring at me in the background. So I see it. Um, I don't. That's so, disturbing, but that's we're not gonna whatever. Ace gave it to me. I mean, what the fuck? Um, and we do have a tiebreaker if needed, and I'm going to give it to you right now. It is from our good friend Chris Jericho. 
Um, his tiebreaker, because I reached out for his tiebreaker, he says he's got to go with Cat dragged in by an eyeliner over Dirty Rotten Filthy Stinking Rich. And he also goes on to say that the album tracks aren't as good on night songs. Distant third for me. So, uh, shit. Fuck you, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> to a cage match to the death. Right. Well, it has also been handed down that the winner from this will go on to the next Drunken Summit and take on the Tesla debut album. Wow, oh, that's yeah. awesome. Okay. Yes. Cinderella and Tesla are hand in hand. Those are that, that, that's kind of a that's a duel right there. It is, it is. But we'll see if it goes that way. Who knows? Right. So yeah, but if it goes to B sides, I think Tesla's got them on that yeah. second. But I digress. Let's handle this one first. Yeah, let's handle this one first. Uh, I, first of all, I want your initial thoughts um, when you first saw that. Like, oh, this is what we're doing. What what were you automatically drawn to? Is, all right, this is going to win that Cinderella was going to run away with this. But then as I was making the list today, I'm not so sure. Yeah, I, I, to me, it was a, to me, it was a warrant Cinderella no brainer. And I love all three bands. So like anything I say is not a knock on poison. I love poison, but I just, it, to me, it was going to be warrant or Cinderella. And I assumed that Cinderella would probably win, but I went through last night, I went through every album a couple times and just, I actually, that's where I got the idea for scoring. Cause I was like going through the songs individually. And I think, uh, I think it might be a little bit closer than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. I also think I will say this. I don't think Cinderella fits. I would have rather have seen like winger as the winger poison warrant. I think Cinderella was cut. You're comparing apples to oranges when you put Cinderella up against warrant and poison. Like they were out opening for Judas Priest. I mean, it didn't really fit with these other two bands. If Winger was in there, then you're like basically it's like every record Bow Hill produced. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I th I right? think that Warren always struck me as Boston. They were great, but kind of faceless. Cinderella as a monster could eat up all the records, but Poison painted a picture of L.A. at the time that none, none of those other records to be painted the picture of what was going on lyrically. You know, they they mm -hmm. and musically, it, it sounds like you're puking um silly string, and and that's what it felt like at that time. So <laughs> right, three right. different monsters. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, to the reason I chose Cinderella over a band like Winger is because I because that Poison record, that Cinderella record, came out at the same time. Yeah. You know, and I, I remember, I think it was in what sixth grade or something like that. And one person had the poison cassette, one person had the fucking Cinderella mm -hmm. cassette. You know, so yeah. that that's why I kind of wanted to go with those. Two. Both on Mercury, right? Because because wasn't Cinderella was on Mercury, right? Joe Cinderella was Mercury. Poison was Capital. An, and Enigma was first. Yeah. Were Enigma. Enigma. That Poison came out on Enigma first. I think was. Yeah, I it did. But I mean, the major yeah. label pushed. Yeah. The Capital worked them. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it was. Yeah. So you have three different labels: Capital, Columbia, and Mercury. I love all, I love all those records. I mean, this is this can be a tough night. Uh, before we started the show, I'm like I'm I'm really looking forward to, to uh, breaking this down. Um, uh, I I mean, but yeah. I gotta say, Cinderella, Tom Kiefer, his vocals. Yeah. Out of all the singers that were that were that were that were dealing with tonight, I think Tom has one of the most unique vocals. Britney Fox really tried to rip. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, rip off tom Kiefer's style and so did slaughter but like that's like listening to dolphins fuck you know <laughs> <laughs> slaughter's vocals is dolphin rape that's all i'm saying to you. right right well i mean fuck i mean it, it, I, I think Janie lane is one of the most underrated motherfuckers in this music industry has ever seen as uh, do i and but i also think Kiefer is too because I think outside of our little uh, 80s rock world that there's a lot of people that don't understand how good Tom Keeper is. And just he just gets thrown in with like, oh, it's fucking hair rock. Yeah, really? here's part of the part of the problem, I think, I, with my the Cinderella. And I love Cinderella. This is not and I agree everything about Tom Keeper. They just their body of work shifted so dynamically on each record. They just they didn't know who they were. And that was like, it got really confusing for people because they started as like this ACDC Judas Priesty type band. And then the next record, they got a little bit bluesier. And by Heartbreak Station, they were like, put them in with Cow the Black Crows. You can't Yeah, cowboy them. rock almost. Yeah, and it was yeah. just, it got, it really, and I think they, they got penalized for that. They really did because they just, they kept shifting too much. And it was, it, this, this first record is really like the- it's. It, 
it sits out like a sore thumb because it's just not what their catalog is. I think that I think Night Songs. I love the entire fucking record. I, I love, love it. Purple. I love. I I mean I I want to say I saw them play. I, the, I, you know the only band I haven't seen out of this group, by the way, I never saw Warrant live. Did you guys all have you guys seen the all yeah. these? Bands live? Yeah. So, yep. so I feel I feel bad about that. Um, and I'm a, definitely a fan of all three bands, but. Cinderella. I want to say uh, in LA, they opened for, I, I think Rat. Is, am I imagining this, Paul? You'd know this better. Did Rat and Bon Jovi and Cinderella all play a show together? Or I was, I was an East Coaster. So that saw, sounds like saw. something that's very, because I know Rat and Bon Jovi did. I, it sounds completely possible. Don't forget, Cinderella were an East Coast band. So Cinderella weren't coming up on the Sunset Strip like Warrant and Poison were. So if they came over here, it was probably playing with other people. So awesome. you, it wasn't like at the whiskey once a month. You know what I mean? You, you were you're from the East Coast, right? Because I was from Jersey. I remember seeing them open for Roth. Yep. Cinderella open for Roth, and I think Bon Jo. Yeah, there was. They also some... opened for Priest. Like I saw them at the New Haven Coliseum opening for Judas Priest. Okay. So. What, wait, I didn't. I didn't realize till this. Coliseum. There was a pre-show I saw them with, and I can't remember. Um, I'm trying to remember which priest because my priest tours are getting flipped in my head. But I know there was also one with Ace Frehley. But they've toured. They've toured with some pretty. You know. Hey, yeah. didn't they do? Didn't they do some dates on Painkiller too? Cinderella. That, that was the one. Yeah. 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 Because then I think Ram It Down was Ace Frehley. Painkiller would have been. Would have been Cinderella. Yeah. I think it was the Long Cold Winter. Would it have been when they were out on Long Cold Winter? Probably, yes. I, I was I, mean, I was in a Cinderella music video. Whoa! Really? Really? Yeah, I can't. And I, uh, I can't remember which one. It's the one with <laughs> like a game show one. I'll, I'll, I'll search for it while we're. Oh, it's uh, Little it Richard. Shelter me! It yeah. shelter me! Oh Richard, wow! Yeah. I mean that, dude. That's badass. Wow, that's cool. That's great. That's I, fucking I, killer. Love this band. Uh, They're so meaningful to me in my in my youth, and I still I, I go back to those records. Tom Kiefer, you know, I fantasize about being able to have a conversation with him. I just love his vocals. I I love that he's still playing. He's still making great records. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I wish I wish some of the members, obviously, of Warrant were still alive because I'd I'd like to hear you know th them play. And and we all know uh, you know the the ups and downs of the guys in Poison. They have some great fucking stories i oh, mean yeah. those guys the love-hate relationship between mm -hmm. those guys that's a comedy they're oh yeah they don't need to do a biopic on poison they need to just make a comedy of the guy yeah. <laughs> ahmed what do you what do you think about the uh the poison record was with Kotzen? well so th that's kind of what i was alluding to like the fact that they're all, all fucking each other and and getting into you know do, doing bad things to one another behind the scenes uh yeah well, even the new guy yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh you know i i i got to say uh i cuz i i really like cc you know i i've spent time not a lot of time with him he's so funny he's a real character mm -hmm. Like I would just hang out with him and um uh, uh god damn it, why am I blanking on uh, uh, uh Motorhead's guitar player, uh Phil, right? So like Phil and Cece were so close. <laughs> really? God, that's a, that's such an odd couple. Yeah. That's so, like, like I mean lemon. I like I cause I've never done blow or smoke pot. I'm, I'm I mean like I'm kind of new to like being a total alcoholic, but I gotta say <laughs> if you're hanging around with the right people, then we'll train we'll train yeah, you well. Yeah, but yes. you're right. Yes. He's, he's right in. Because I was at I was at a Nam show with and and so it's like you know the the my worlds with CC and Phil, you know, uh, uh, you know came colliding to, together and that was just a real joy and I, I just I was friendly with Brett because he, he was hanging out with my sister I think and my brother when I was younger, I, and I like right before their record came out for the first time and I thought this dude is like so fucking good looking he's like the new David Lee Roth this and he's really hard. <laughs> And I just remember, like, wait, Gary Coleman has like has to inject himself with with uh, you know insulin. I'm like, he's like Gary Coleman. <laughs> <laughs> so I had like all these like <sighs> of like, no, he's a rock star, but he like he's got diabetes or like whatever his issues were, right? Right. Uh, so it, it, just, it, it, I mean, just so you know, in the in the Midwest, we call it diabetes. Diabetes. Di diabetes. 
What you talking about, Izzy? Yeah. So <laughs> I, just, I, I have like this emotional connection and you know, like the, they all rock so fucking hard. I mean, there's just different moments in our, in our lives. So I'm, again, I'm thrilled to be a part of this, this fucking cage match to the death. I love it. I love it. A three-way dance. And Izzy, like I said, Izzy, yes. I, pro I promised you a, uh, I promised you a Cinderella story. Oh yes, yes, yes. He has a, a real Redding. quick one. Yeah. When, when I was with, when they did their reunion show, cause they were split up for a while. They did yep. a reunion show at some like dive bar. It was a benefit for somebody. And it was their first show in years together as a band in Pennsylvania. They did it in Pennsylvania. It was either Pennsylvania or New Jersey, but I, Jerry's like, you have to go cover this. I'm like, oh my God, I would love to, of course. So this was when Jerry was, Jerry and I were both at the magazine and I go to the show and I'm all excited because I love Cinderella. And I was just so, this was so huge. I was like, oh my God, Cinderella reunion. And I'm backstage before the show and I was interviewing, like getting some quotes from the guys and I was talking to Eric and we're just like totally just casual and like thinking I was saying the right thing, right? I'm like, so I got to tell you guys, honestly, I'm so excited for today's show. You're literally one of my favorite bands from this era. He was like, oh, okay. And nothing really changed. Not the, the demeanor of the conversation didn't change. I got home. No sooner did I walk in the door than Jerry Miller called me. This was like, you know, the beginning of cell phones. Um, and Jerry's like, what did you say to Eric Brittingham? And I'm like, what are you talking about? I didn't say, I didn't say anything. I, I, I told him I was, they were one of my favorite bands from the era. She goes, he hates you. He wants to never be, he said he never wants to see you at a Cinderella show. He said you insulted him with a backhanded compliment and blah, blah, blah. And it was literally, I was like blown away. And I'm like, what? I told her exactly what I said. And then everything kind of got hashed out because I knew a couple of the other guys in the band, but, and I since saw Eric several, several, several years later, but, for years, I was like, fuck these guys. Eric has no sense of humor. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm going to contact wow. Eric for cameo and make him apologize to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, here I am thinking. That was like my first like real moment of sensitive rock stars. You know what I mean? Where like, you guys are one of my favorite bands in the era. You think you're saying the right thing. And it just is like, nope, he hated it. That was it. I was like, it uh, does anyone feel like like with the power of cameo that you can just kind of get people to unknowingly support like like fake brands like oh, if I, yeah oh yeah uh, like cat litter i could get like all of my favorite <laughs> heroes from the 80s to be like yeah you know i just wanted to say like i really love the, the kitty litter brand, you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know that will do it for like 200 bucks Right. Oh, yeah, it's like, I, we, we I, got one for a friend of ours. We we got uh, the guy who I can't remember his name, Martin Cove. The guy who has Crease on Cobra Kai and Karate yeah, Kid. Yeah. It was so funny. I'm like, this is what $210 will get you on Cameo. And he's like, sweep the leg. Jesus <laughs> <laughs> Christ. I paid I paid fucking Lando Calrissian $300 to tell Kevin Smith to cast me in the next Small Rats movie. How'd it work out? Uh, yeah. Get yeah. the part? No. Absolutely not. <laughs> Did you void the payment because you didn't get the the? <laughs> well, the delivery was terrible, but uh, he's old, so <laughs> I let that slide. Yeah, here's like the criminal way of doing this: just get like a, a credit card and be like, "Yeah, my uh, fake child that I don't have spent ten thousand oh, dollars on yeah. cameo." <laughs> like, like, who would spend ten thousand dollars on cameo? And it should just all be to promote your podcast, is he? <laughs> <laughs> fucking brilliant yeah. fucking brilliant all right so here's what we're gonna do because uh this is gonna take uh it's probably gonna take till the top of the hour um Amit, do you have a hard out at seven i do because i'm gonna i'm gonna see my children that are real and we're gonna <laughs> yummy sushi and right. uh you know let's say this what it is all right well yeah that's fine that's that's why i always plan on you having a hard out at seven so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a short break. Uh, first half of the show brought to you by Beater Amplification. That's two E's, beateramplication.com. You see that beautiful fucking amp right behind me with the Ace Fraley uh, Budokan in front of it. And uh, three channels, 100 watts of testicular fortitude, pull two tubes. You got yourself a 50. These things are fucking amazing. Hand-wired, hand-built, and awesome. Beateramplification.com. Hit them up on the Facebook as well. And our good friends over at Mackie, too. It's M-A-C-K-I-E. Uh, want to get into podcasting, want to get into home recording, check out our good friends over at Mackey. They have a very affordable way to get in with the studio bundles. I mean, we're talking less than 500 bucks, blah, 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 blah. less than 500 bucks, kids. Trying to talk too fast and I'm not fucking hammered yet. So follow like, bear with me. 
sound like Daffy Duck. Yeah, right, right. So uh, here's what we're going to do. We are going to take a short little minute and a half break. We'll be right back, and we will get into the actual throwdown. Song versus song versus song. The very first ever three-way dance. It is another fucking podcast. Rockstarleatherworks.com is your home for badass rock and roll gear. Featuring 100% handmade leather bands, watches, cuffs, bracelets, and more, Rockstar Leatherworks has something for everybody. Whether you are going to the show or you are in it, you can find something to fit your needs. Choose from a variety of designs or create your own masterpiece. Their bands and watches are second to none. They also ship internationally. Who needs a stage to be a rock star? Check out rockstarleatherworks.com. Hey ladies, Sass Pants Designs will take that band shirt that everyone has and make it your own in a flattering, sassy, and simple way. There are one-of-a-kind tank tops, halter tops, lace-up tees, and tube top dresses already in stock. Check out the online store at sasspantsrocks.com and like Sass Pants Designs on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for special offers and custom orders. Use the code IZZY25 for 25% off of your entire order at sasspantsrocks.com. That's sasspantsrocks.com. Let Sass Pants make you the envy of the party. Rockwood Saloon Authentic Apparel takes rock and roll fashion to a new level with their tees and tanks for men and women. They also make custom shirts, jackets, vests, pants, hoodies, beanies, and more. The Rockwood Graphics Department can design anything from your logo, t-shirt design, promo posters, band swag, and printed at great prices. From tour shirts and custom stage gear to killer threads from the street to the stage, Rockwood Saloon has it all. Rockwood Saloon, authentic rock and roll apparel for stage and street. World Tour tested for quality, comfort, style, and durability. Check them out at www.rockwoodsaloon.com. That's rockwoodsaloon.com. Hey, what's going on? This is Tom Arnold. I like uh, fat women and cocaine. And you're listening to Izzy Presley here on another uh, fucking podcast. And uh, I know Izzy. Uh, from Cocaine Anonymous meetings. I've actually uh, seen him at the meetings with uh, uh, Ace Von Johnson. From, uh, I probably shouldn't say this out loud, but Ace has got a bad Coke problem. And uh, his sponsor is uh, is uh, Josh Todd. from. And again, I shouldn't say this out loud, but Josh is a sponsor for Buck Cherry. He's addicted to upskirt porn. And, uh, and they're both being sponsored by the Eagles. The, uh, the whole band, the Eagles. There's, anyways, uh, another fucking podcast right here with Izzy Presley. And uh, call your sponsor. All Love right, you. here we go. Second half of the show brought to you by AMP Laser. Uh, AP Laser, hit them up on the fucking uh, on on the interwebs. Uh, need something laser engraved? They are very very good. They are the ones that are responsible for my amazing roadie packs, which are a tumbler. Uh, that you can put coffee or, you know, drinks in if you're an alcoholic like us, a Zippo type lighter, a dog tag, and a, uh, what's the other one? No, that's it. Oh, a flask, a flask, like a good alcoholic. What's that? Can we do jerky? Can they laser engrave, (laughs) laser etch, like any kind of exotic meats, like from a wet? he has, I have seen him laser engrave a hot dog bun before, so it can be done. Wow. There you go. And. And our good friend, John Palumbo, johnpalumbodesign.com. You have a band, you have a business, business, you need a website done. Hit him up, John Palumbo at johnpalumbo.com. We, johnpalumbodesign.com. All right, here we go. Uh, one more shot as we go. Cheers, motherfuckers. It is time for the three-way dance. Oh, God, my liver hates me, but I love me. All right, here we go. It is Night Songs versus Look What the Cat Dragged In versus Dirty, Rotten, Filthy, Stinking Rich. And uh, one, two, three. We got Night Songs versus Cry Tough versus 32 Pennies. Who wants to start? I'll d- fucking dive right in. Night Songs is fucking kills that. Night Songs! <laughs> <laughs> What's your number two? Uh, Hang tough. No, that's cry tough. Cry tough. That's what I said. Booty traps. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you're you're going night songs, thirty two penny or night songs. Cry tough, thirty two pennies. That's yep. one, two, three. Cinderella poison warrant. Okay, Brit. Night songs. Cry tough. Thirty two pennies. Night songs just so mean. I wanted to go cry tough, but it's so mean. Mm-hmm. Chadwick. Uh, I got to go with the group. 
Night songs, cry tough, 32 pennies. As much as I love 32 pennies. Yep, I, I'm the same way. It's I guess just I'm going to be the voice of dissent here. Are oh, you going the same exact way as I'm going the same exact way. Is 32 pennies is great. Cry tough is so fucking good, but night songs is just to like stick with fortitude. So you know what? Just because of the way I am, and like I said, I love this album. I love the band. Um, I went cry tough first, 32 pennies second, night songs wow. now. Because I just feel like it's just it's not one of the best Cinderella songs. It plods along a little bit. It's just, I don't like it as much as Cry Tough and I don't like it as much as 32 Pennies. Wow. How do you live with yourself being- <laughs> <laughs> You know, that, that was, so my order was basically flipped from you have- Poison Warrant Cinderella instead of, yeah, so that's- you have Beard Dementia. <laughs> <laughs> Ahmed, this is why I love you. I, have a, I bet you I have more Cinderella songs at the top of my list than you do in the end. That's just that one. I was just like, well, when I listened to all three of those in a row last night, I did it several times. I just. What does that even mean? We have three songs that we're picking between. And you're saying you're betting me that we have you have more Cinderella songs. On the- I, at the end of 10, I bet you I have more Cinderella songs in the lead than you do. That's what I'm saying. I didn't understand night songs till I started DJing with the smoke machine like a few months ago. Like, I, for real, it's it was late and like whoa. I thought it plotted too till I yeah. DJed and I'd come back with the smoke machine like whoa. This is heavy, man. My friend actually got emotional from Philly. He's like, dude, that song really hit me and made me realize I, what our youth was and what a big piece of us that yeah, was. I like the song a lot. I, yeah, not, yeah. I just like the song. I just cried tough for me. I wrote that Poison record off. And when I heard Cry Tough, it just takes me right back. Oh, to I that. get it, man. The, it's just. No, it is definitely a, that song is definitely a snapshot of the time for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Guys, Night Songs, that, that the opening of that, the mood that it puts you in. <sighs> yeah. Dawkins is jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, right? That, you know, that's that, the opening of that song is demonology for dummies. You put the, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> it happened. I'm gonna be possessed. It's kind of like it's kind of like a new shot at the devil, is what it was. It really yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. Wow, wow. And that is why he wrote for Metal Edge magazine, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, move. Actually, I, I I thought at the beginning that first one was gonna be the toughest, but I think no, this, this one is. This one's the toughest. Shake me versus I want action versus Down Boys. Ooh. Chad. Oh, fuck. Um, I already know. I'm going to go. I I, I thought I was going to go shake me. I'm not. I'm going to go down, boys. Shake me. I want action. I'm going to back Chad. Down, boys. Shake me. I want action. I back you too, Chad. I back you. Shake me is a fucking. uh, Yeah, 100%. (laughs) But. Where the down boys go? It's so sad. I, yeah, and it was like, the, <laughs> like come right. on. Come it was it, and that little guitar thing in the beginning, and that was our first intro into Warrant. Come on, yeah. you, you gotta go. Even if they didn't yeah. play on it. Yeah. I'm, well, I'm, who cares? <laughs> well, I thought they did. Nah. No, Some of them I, I, none of that stuff bothers me. I don't care. Oh, about no, me I, I, like the, I like it more. I like it more. Fucking songs. I like it more. More mystery. I love it. I know. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Winger should be in here, but when you when you have anything produced by Bo Hill, all of the Winger brothers are actually on the record. So <laughs> <laughs> it's they're there. Right? That's an excellent <laughs> point. That's an that's excellent a great point, point man. Um, I'm still deciding. Paul, go for it. Um, I did uh, shake me first. <laughs> down boys second, which was the that might have been the hardest decision of the whole thing for me. But shake me first, down boys second, and I want action third. You know, I think I might be going that way as well. Um, I used to absolutely love, and I still do love I Want Action, but it's just, there's just this cheese element to it, which I should love because of my love for fucking Kiss. Cheese, he put spoken uh, word in the bridge. <laughs> and Yeah, uh, right? You know, it's it's a goddamn po- that's goddamn poetry. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I got it. That, that, I think that's the correct order for, for myself. I feel bad. I feel... I feel like I'm betraying Tom. But I, I know. I, I'm, I'm going to stick with Chad's decision. I because I, you know, uh, it's such a hit. I mean, that you know, Warren, you can't really argue that that hit. Yeah. Yeah. It, right. It, it hard and 
I, it's, I know it's a little more gloss, not as powerfully, you know, hard rocking as. Um, uh, how do you sleep with yourself? And how do you live with yourself? Sorry. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, live with myself? By, how do you live with, I was just saying, because you said, how do I live with myself for not having Cinderella? So now I'm asking you, how do you live with yourself? <laughs> with fucking regrets. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Right now, I'm I'm I I take this shit seriously. I am con. Oh, I do too. I am. Like, that's you're like this, well, is this why was I the hardest drinking. one though. This was the hardest one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Patrick, or, uh, <laughs> um, before we go on, I didn't creep Patrick out on Saturday, did I? Oh my god, no. I mean that oh, was good, good because I was just I was busting balls. <laughs> you know, I think that you and my brother-in-law, TV's Patrick Muldoon, uh, uh, you know, sci-fi's Patrick Muldoon, uh, Starship. Starship Troopers. <laughs> I think we would have an inappropriate jacuzzi with you. Twenty. <laughs> I'm, all right, I'm game. I'm I, game. Also, I also think. I also think if his brother-in-law is Amit, you've got a long way to go to creep him out. <laughs> yeah, true. Sure. Not talk, That's an excellent point. Like, That's an excellent, excellent point. point. This is not <laughs> snowflake creeping out. This is like you've got to take it to another level. Yep. <laughs> Get busy. I can. That's. That's. I can only. I can only recommend just the tip. You know. All right. <laughs> hey, you know. It is. It's a. It's a good way to go. Um. All right. So this. Speaking of just a tip, this is another tough one as well. I won't forget you versus nobody's fool versus big talk. Now this is easy. You think so? I think so. Yeah. I don't know. This one's hard for me. Number one's pretty easy. Yeah. Nobody's fool. Nobody's fool. Yeah. Never again. No, no. I mean, like, <laughs> he has Tom Kiefer has a gremlin, a troll living <laughs> on his larynx. A powerful <laughs> entity. Under the bridge under on his larynx. <laughs> yes, under the right. bridge. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be nobody's fool, number one. And oh, then, I don't know. I, you know, I agree with Amit. Fucking awesome. Yeah, right, what's what, two and three? What's two and three? I I personally, if there's a ballad from the era that doesn't hold up to me, it's I won't forget you. I threw big talk ahead of it. I went I went Cinderella warrant poison. I gotta go there. I gotta go that way too. Wait, what are the choices again? Sorry. Um, I won't forget you, which is like the breakout ballad for poison, yeah. and then big talk. Interestingly, the other two bands went ballad third and Warrant went big talk. Because, you know, right now, if you could steal something from the second record, I know a secret down in Uncle Don's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'd love to throw that in the mix, but you just, we can't, you know, it's <laughs> not allowed. Um, I actually think you're right, Paul. I'm going to go, I'm going to go with Paul's decision right there. Okay. Britt. I'm, you're gonna hate me, but I'm gonna fully go because we're moving out in '88. I won't forget you in that video with the motorcycles inside, mix missing high school girlfriends, moving to California. It just was an emotional rape. Then, uh, <laughs> wow. But, uh, but I just, but then uh, nobody's fool. And I had to grow up a little bit to realize how evil women could be to go to nobody's fool. I had to graduate. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> and then big talk, big talk. Trust like I said, I love all the war, but ly lyrically it didn't like there. Were, besides for heaven, it didn't completely hit me. I never knew it was like Boston. It was cool feelings, but not emotional raping feelings like like a lot of the Cinderella and uh, Poison. But I was raped. I won't forget you. I could just fucking cry hearing that song. Yeah, I get it. Oh, now like, someone's got to play this song. I want to see Britt cry. <laughs> oh, I really, dude, the motorcycle, Bobby Doll. Didn't he? Weren't they carry him off stage that live? Oh, yeah. Dude? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. They did. Yeah. The they're Texas playing Texas Jam. Yeah. Texas Jam. Texas Jam. I'm like, I want to do that. I don't fuck fucking math. I'm moving to California. Those guys came from Pennsylvania. <laughs> fuck that. That's what I want to do. Right. Chadwick. Uh, I, I got to go with the guys. I got to go full big talk. I won't forget you as much as I love. I won't forget you. And there's something about the production on big talk, the big, that big drum thing yeah. and the, and the sing song chorus on it. I'm a, you know, me, I'm a hook guy. It, it just, I think, I think if you're strictly talking songwriting, I think that one stands up a little better. I mean, plus, I, I, plus I don't think they wrote, I won't forget you. That's just, I, uh, let me, let me just tell you something. Night songs. Okay. That that they may as well call their band Tackle Box because that song <laughs> nothing, nothing but hooks. Yep. 
Oh, God. I am actually going to go away from the grain on this one. Um, I have, I won't forget you at number one, Big Talk at number two, and Nobody's Fool at number three. And I'll tell you why. Being a jock on radio and having to play Nobody's Fool over and over and over and over and over and over and over, I got rather sick of it. As great as it is, as much as I love the version he did with Lizzie Hale, which fucking rules, it's just, it, it's a, such a great song, but it's it's burnt into a part of my brain that I don't like to look at a lot. Um, so I I have to go with- uh, It's there with your uncle it. issues? Yeah, well, uh, daddy issues, the daddy that I never I met. Be, uh, I'll be right back, guys. I'm so sorry. No, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> Do not whistle big. Too much mictors. I'll be right back. Yeah, Go right. Go for it. Go for it. Um, oh my God. Let's get to some uh let's get to some uh, listener feedback while we're at this. Um, they everybody's putting in their fucking their love for the songs. Um and Lori says he's only listening to try and win a free Chad Stewart. Uh Chad, I don't know <laughs> if you saw that on the ad mat. I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't quite sure what it meant, but I thought it was funny. Don't don't oh, yeah. <laughs> I, Izzy's not sure what it meant either. That's the whole point. <laughs> I, it was just like, okay, an autograph. No, fuck it. I'm just gonna give away a free Chad Stewart. It's just <laughs> boom. That's just what it is. Um, Tall Bear and oh god, we got a bunch of hosers checking in, so we'll play this for them. And uh, very, you know, big of the Canadians to be uh, in right now because it is USA versus Canada in the uh, World Juniors Championship game right now. Oh, God, what else do we got? Uh, oh, Lori also says Highway Robbery for the last show, which was uh, Back in Black versus Highway to Hell and Back in Black won by two songs. Uh, what did I miss? Did Paul come out? I have not come out yet. I was waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but we, uh, we did give away the free Chad Stewart. I'm ready, Paul. You and I? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> LA's not ready. <laughs> no, no. West don't Hollywood would just implode. <laughs> Paul, don't you fuck around with me because if you and I walk away into the sunset with me, hand in hand, when when you guys hey, when you guys leave the rainbow that night, I want to be there. <laughs> you up, you up. Nobody's fool as we walk yeah. out. <laughs> yes. In yes. Time. Yes. All right. Here we go. Uh, track number four. Nothing for nothing versus play dirty versus sometimes she cries see this is where it gets tough because now we start getting into a couple of this, is, this is not tough for me at all sometimes she cries runs right. away with first nothing for nothing second play dirty fourth i'm the same i'm i'm with paul on this exactly but the same sometimes she cries you just can't compete now, interestingly, nobody's fool probably would have beaten somebody. Sometimes she cries, but overall, you just can't beat a Janie Lane ballad. It, it yeah. can't be. There's, and like heaven is the monster. We're not even there yet. But sometimes she cries to me. Nothing for nothing. Solid play. Dirty to me is almost a throwaway. Yeah, I yeah. agree. I agree. Put me down for the same. Amit, I, I I'm with you. I'm I'm confused. I thought we were only doing three songs, but now we're doing the entire record. I yes. must. Have must be too drunk and not remember how this fucking show operates whatsoever <laughs> let me let me tell you something paul you're right right now you're right now i'm now i'm concerned because i had it locked in my stupid head <laughs> that we were only doing the top three songs right and i was like oh no. the top three no fucking uh, uh, cinderella takes that no fucking problem and now i'm an idiot now i'm concerned, <laughs> I'm, fucking concerned. I'm, I'm nervous now <laughs> oh god so, well did we you agree i agree Izzy, did you agree yes i agreed brent where are you at i'm going uh i think i'm agreeing with you guys sometimes she cries number one nothing for nothing which yep. is a great churner number two and though i love poison there's two songs on this record that just as a kid, I hate they little boys. They sing about being boys, like in this weird way, like yeah. th like dirty boys do. It's like it's just weird to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they're asking their mom for permission. The rest of the the rest of the record is based in L.A. I feel like two songs are still in Pennsylvania. You I know would, what I mean? I 
I'd like to unpack that in therapy with you, Britt. Well, you <laughs> really, oh, dude, dude, I did a whole thing on my show about mama let me go to the show where it, I dig that, we'll get to that. I'll, it really bothers me. It bothered me, bothers me a lot. These two songs really. <laughs> Really, like, this is an because, issue. I love it. Because, I, because as a fucking kid, I love rock stars. I thought they had eight digit phone numbers. And Brett Michaels, like, you don't ask your mom for permission to go to a concert. And I'm playing like a dirty boy. Like, yeah. like if, yeah. if Halford sang it, it would have been mean. But this is his week. Week. Look what the cat dragged in. He's sleeping with two. How, are you oh, sleeping yeah. with two chicks and drinking all night? Or are you asking your mom for permission? Make a pick a fucking lane, Brett. Pick a fucking of- lane. All right, so did everybody uh everybody go? Everybody Chad, agreed? Did you go? Yeah, I did. I yeah. Oh, so we all agree. Nothing right. for nothing. Yeah, same as you. All, all right. right. We all agree. Speaking of look what look what the cat dragged in, we have that song versus Once Around the Ride versus So Damn Pretty Should Be Against the Law. I'm gonna do it in the exact order you just said it. Boom, look what the cat dragged in. Crusher, Crusher, Crusher. Documentation of LA at the time. Perfect song. So you yeah. Poison Cinderella Warrant was your order. Okay. Yeah, Poison Cinderella Warrant was the order, Chad. Uh yeah. I'm I gotta go with that. I got to. It's a fucking wow. it's cat dragged in is is I mean, they still open to with it to this day during the show. Um, when we open for them and Oh, two, we opened with it. <laughs> can, I, can I ask you guys? A, can I ask you guys a question? Who wrote the riff, though? Did Aerosmith write the riff? Armored Saint or Poison? I'm always cons- is that? Can you deliver? <laughs> Lightning strikes? No, I'm really like, who wrote that? that that's a it's wow. a mashup. Okay, it is. It is Ahmet. I I I'm gonna go with the crowd here. I I believe in everything you guys are saying. I like this order, and I I. I was at an MTV Music Video Awards. I don't, I don't know which one it was. Early, early on, um, I was walking with Brett. Okay, this is like with such a fond memory. And in my head, I'm like, I'm walking with Brett. He's so rad. I am singing on a loop. Look what the cat dragged in. And then I watched Brett go up to Hetfield from Metallica, and it's like, Hey, man, how you doing? Right. And I watched this whole uh, conversation happen. And in my my stupid mind, I'm like. No man, Metallica is like they're like they're too hard. Like, what are you doing, Brett? Like, twelve-year-old like, <laughs> like mind. Like, like you were scared for him. Like, like, no, Brett, what are you doing? Oh, Brett, don't do it. <laughs> happening right now, okay? Oh, that's great. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ! Backlot of Universal. Uh, <laughs> so weird for the after party. It was this, you know, bonkers, stupid memory. So yeah, I I, I agree with the. Uh, with uh, with in the in the rundown, with you, Izzy, actually, as you described the the tracks, um, uh, go for it, Paul. Oh, I, I, I thought you went already. Okay, you go. No, I was gonna go. Um, yeah, cat dragged in, but I'm going. Uh, um, uh, the warrant song, and then the Cinderella song. I, I'm with you. I this that to me. There's two tracks on that Cinderella record that I just they were just too derivative for me. And once around the right, that was the first, that one to me, it's just kind of just too basic. I just kind of, that was when I felt like they dialed in. I went um, Cat Dragged In and So Damn Pretty Second. So Cinderella was, that's one of the few Cinderella thirds for me. All right, here we go. Track number six, Hell on Wheels versus Talk Dirty to Me versus In the, oh, Dirty Rotten Filthy Stinking Rich. Title track. This is easy. Okay. Who's going first? Go for it. Oh, Talk Dirty to Me is a hands down runaway yeah. Absolutely. fucking song. Dirty Rotten, second, and Hell on Wheels, third. As, Absolutely. I like the riff from Hell on Wheels, but it's. Yep. Yeah. That, the Hell on Wheels is the second. Those are the two throwaway tracks for me on the Cinderella record Once Around the Ride and Hell on Wheels. Those, not the throwaways, but they're the two I don't care about. Those right. are the two songs. So I just, same as Chad, I agree completely. I agree you with Chad. Just, like, talk dirty to me is just that's yeah, yeah. You that's can't argue with it. You can't argue with it. It's one of those songs that you can. It's like unlike nobody's fool for some reason. I I I can keep hearing talk dirty to me over and over and over right. and still fucking love it and still get into the fun of it. You know, it it is fun. It's a easy riff to play on the guitar. Yeah. Um and uh, not easy enough for me to play. 
Oh, I, <laughs> I will say, well, because you have no talent, Paul. Um, but on, uh, 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 I don't know, man. What, is, what are the tracks again? Because I do think it's Poison Cinderella. If I would say, I would say it was Poison Cinderella Warrant. All yes. right, so it's uh, Talk Dirty to Me versus Dirty Rotten Filthy Stinking Rich versus Hell on Wheels. No, I gotta go. I, I gotta agree with you guys because I remember thinking uh, the the you know the the title track of the name of the record for Warrant. I was like, I was really curious to hear that. I was like, this is cool because I love the logo. Yeah, uh, yeah. I love the artwork. You know that weird like fucking fat guy with the crazy hair and the. Yep, there it is. <laughs> Brent's got the shirt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we uh, move on to track seven then. No, what about you and Brett? Oh no, yeah, it's uh oh I'm sorry. Um no, I agree with Chad. Chad Okay. Saying. Yeah, yeah. We're all in too. agreement. Yeah, all yeah. in agreement. All in agreement. Um, so we move on to track number seven, Cinderella, somebody save me, versus want some, need some off of poison and in the sticks from oh, warrant. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think uh, weirdly, Izzy, I think the way that you read off the order is is my my pick. There's no way Cinderella wins this round. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because he says the shit you had for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but also the song's amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Wait, what's the order you read him in? Because he said the order you read him in. Uh, warrant. I'm uh, oh, sorry. Cinderella, Warrant, Poison. Okay. What um, was the Warrant song? No, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Cinderella, Poison, Warrant. Poison was want some, need some, right. and, and warrants in the sticks. In the sticks, correct. All right. I am, I agree. Somebody Save Me is my favorite Cinderella song of all time because of the line, the shit you ate for breakfast. That's my favorite Cinderella song. That's number one by a long shot. I've got in the sticks second and want some, need some. Going back to what Britt said about certain songs that just rub me the wrong way about Poison, that one to me just always rubbed me the wrong way. That's third for me. You know what, Paul? I have to agree with you. Save me! <laughs> you, you guys I'm a, are gonna. I'm a Izzy and Paul on this one. You guys are gonna hate me. I fucking love that intro film when I DJ want some needs some. I open my show with it sometime. Want some needs some. Save me and the this the warrant song is the only wow, song. You're I going can't poison recall. first. First love. Wow. Wrap wow. My arm. He wraps his arms around no one. I'm fucking into it, man. All right. He's fucking wanting. All. He's wanting. I'm very lyrically driven by poison. I don't even listen to the music. It's the lyrics with them. Rich yeah. got some poetry. Issues. The poetry. Yeah, I were I sorted myself out. Some people use Adele. I use poison. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. Track hey, number eight. Is um, he um yes? Question for Britt. Do you ever pee into your own mouth? Just, it's <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to get underneath oh. your I'm just trying to uh, understand. Uh, I, I I don't know why. Just that drum fill. I, I I and I understand. I I, I just have to. I, I Look, Ricky, I'll exp offline. I'll explain. A, um, Ricky Rocket crushes, but your choice right now is wrong. It's wrong. <laughs> it's not. It's not on it. It's not. I'm let. Um, I'm, I'm, it's not. But I I understand. I understand. <laughs> he understands oh. why. We, he understands why we would think he's wrong but he says he's not. Yes. <laughs> oh, actually, uh, so just so you guys know, um, after the show is over, um, anybody that wants to hang around, I'm going to be posting the Zoom link on the Facebook page, the Another Effing Podcast Facebook page. So if any listeners want to pop in and uh, have some drinks and uh, post-show a little uh, soiree, you are more than welcome. All right, so here we go. Track number eight. In from the outside from Cinderella. Um, we've got Blame It On You from Poison. And we've got Heaven from Warrant. Now, I'm going to start on this one. Heaven, I, uh, then this, the Cinderella I, song. Because, yeah, I'll tell you what I love about the Cinderella song. This sounds like a T-Rex song. You go back and it sounds like fucking T-Rex. It sounds like... Whatever that fucking song is. Um, and that song does not... T-Rex no. wishes they were as good as Cinderella. Whoa, whoa. Oh, what whoa, the fuck is whoa. happening? you brit put yourself in wow. the wow oh. I, I have a question for you do you ever oh. shit in your own mouth no oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay listen is it i think right. I, what you decided was heaven is the number one choice on yes. on, on this yeah. then, yep. then cinderella then, then cinderella then the poison song the poison I, song does absolutely nothing for me the host of this show thank you izzy 
Cheap. Cheap. And I, for the record, I agree with you 100% also. That's mine also. And mine too. I actually agree with you for once. Wow. You want to talk about um, how, like, as a DJ, from your DJ point of view? <laughs> <laughs> it's just this thing. No, I, I'm with you. I, I, that's the worst. I hate You're that. You sure there's no song. daddy issue here you want to discuss while we're in therapy you know, right now? I, I'm it. I, I had a Brett. How um, funny y'all um, make you feel? <laughs> I had a Brett Hetfield moment. We'll talk about it another time because it'll take a half hour. Maybe I'm working through it. But, um, yeah, blame it on you. It's a terrible song. T terrible song as a, DJ, as a dj you agree right as a DJ, that really is lame as a dj oh god it's so lame oh as a dj oh god oh god you're right you're right oh my professional me. opinion as my, a oh DJ. jesus oh. fuck yeah. i sound like a dick yeah that's gross that's no gross. you sound like a dj <laughs> <laughs> fuck all you. right all right, next song, number nine. Wait, Chad, what is Chad? Was Chad in agreement? That's a yeah, DJ. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, we got Cinderella, Push Push, versus number one bad boy, versus Riding High. All right. Riding uh, High is a good song, bro. Riding High is a good song, but man, Push Push, I don't know. I always loved that song. Yeah. Oh, I love that song. For me, it's Push Push. Riding high, a really close second, and a way, 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 way distant third, like Poison trying to sound like Motley Crue. Yeah. I'm yeah, going to go push, 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 one, riding high, two, number one, bad boy, eight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> fucking eight. Terrible song. Yeah, Terrible I'm song. I'm with you, Britt. Fucking yeah, number in the song. Me number too. one. Hey, number push, one, push. bam. Push, number push. one DJ, number one DJ. <laughs> push, push, the only uh, song out of this these three songs that you will ever hear on Hair Nation. Well, I will say this. It's like, uh, you know, like when Train sings about a soy latte. You know, <laughs> yes, and Ty Bo, and Ty Bo, and Ty Bo. Wow. Oh, yeah. oh, my God. Dude, the Ahmed, just before we go on. Uh, when I Ahmed, was you win. You win. Ahmed just won. When, when I was listening to the, 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 Steve, the Stephen Piercy episode of Rock Tales, and when you guys are going through the songs, and was it your producer that kept playing fucking uh, uh, Counting, Counting Crow. Crows? Listen, you, you do not want to get Counting Crow poisoning. You listen to oh. one track. If you get to the second song, dude, you have to chop your own head off. Yes. It's it's unlistenable. Uh, it, it's but it was hilarious when he kept going back to it. It was I'm dying. See, it's it all San trouble. Francisco. That's why you know what I mean, right? Yes, it was gross. It was disgusting. But I was pissing myself. All right, here we go. Uh, so we, we all agree on that one too, right? Yeah, we all. Yeah, we all agree. One. Here we go. Uh, back home again from Cinderella versus Mama. Let me go to the show oh. versus Cold Sweat. This is the throwaway of throwaways at the end. <laughs> I, I no, I, 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 those, neither. All right, let me go to the show. Is just that's that that might be the biggest. That should be the like the dumpster fire theme of 2020. <laughs> but uh, that to me is so distant. Third, like it's not even funny. But Cold Sweat is an yeah. underrated song, and Absolutely. I that I had that as number one until I listened a bunch. I actually put Back Home again in front of it. I went Cinderella Warrant, Poison, Distant Third. That's what I did. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm All with right. you. And I love stage songs when bands write about the stage. Scorpions did a lot of that. They write about and Cinderella open with it. Okay, turn the page though, is the best song about being on stage, right? You're right. Yeah, you're right. Better you're right, than you're right. better than the uh, the what's his name, the Jackson Brown song. Ooh. Yes. But go go. Hey, check out uh, almost maybe by that much. Like nine out of ten songs on Love It First Sting are about the stage and rocking. I fucking love that. Like Love It yeah. First Coming Home Again, all about when the stage is home, you're a lifer. And Ke Keeper always did remind me of the older kid in the neighborhood that just was cooler than everybody and dealt pot. You know, and, I never and, thought and about it like that, but you're absolutely right. I, I, you are right, Brent. That's a fuck. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he had a fucking Camaro and a Les Paul, and he could, yeah, you can. He had a dime bag on him. <laughs> Unfortunately, he had an IROC Z. Let's just be real. Yeah, oh, yeah but it, it had it had T tops, so it was yeah. cool. Oh, he just had the face like the babysitter that you wanted, this boyfriend or something that used to like, yeah, it was something. Maybe he was a little more sensitive. Maybe he had a, a Volkswagen Scirocco at the time. 
I used to have a I used to have a friend that had a sheriff's badge to emulate Brett Michaels, and he had the name Shirokin Joe on his fucking in a sheriff's badge. <laughs> True story. I, I'm just doing math, so it, that's, right. uh, I on. do need to know what Chad and Izzy thought for that one. Uh, that I'm going. I'm that. going with the group on this one. All right. And I am going. Don't hate me. I'm going poison. Let me go to the show at number one. Oh my god! I always loved that song. Well, oh. you, you also pose naked with wrestling belts, so we can't hold well, yeah. it against you. Hey <laughs> mom, I take the you, oh, do you take them bad boys that play that rock and roll? <laughs> hey, mom, I'm gonna that. put the biggest <laughs> fight up. <laughs> Izzy's gonna. Hey mom, I take them bad boys. Oh, and, and then Cinderella, and then Warren. Izzy, listen, we're all familiar with the app. Task rabbit, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the only guy that's gonna be like, yeah, I need someone to jack off some cats, okay. <laughs> that your choice reminds me of that <laughs> creepy dude that's gonna be like, sure, I'll I'll jack your cat off. <laughs> that's oh, I don't look. I don't know. I just always. Oh, liked that this song. is so good. I always, I always loved that song. It just, oh. it was just this fucking thing. It's like that. This, this, this is fun. Mom, also, let me go to the show. You also just take like the strongest, like uh, like some sandpaper and just stick your tongue out and fucking rub all your taste buds off. Hey, rock and roll rodeo. Oh, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> I'm concerned for you, Izzy. I'm concerned. Yeah. You, know, you need to stop doing your own show after making that. <laughs> yeah, and start doing your show. Ah! Yeah, I'm going to have you on, by the way. This, I can't this, wait. It's it's gonna happen. I I love you, Izzy. I I, you know, I love I, you too, man. I'm gonna turn the table. All right. Uh, do we have a? Uh, you know, he's still. I'm, I'm adding. It's like uh, so we're we're watching um we're watching Ringo Starr and Caveman. You guys just keep talking about your rocks man, right now. Shortly, so you and I are bonding because you just mentioned Caveman. Tell me if you understand this. Chunda Aluna Lana. Doo doo kaka. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gug Puka. <laughs> Puka. Chanda Aluna Lana. <laughs> By the way, I, these are these are I think I'm getting it right. I love that movie Caveman when they like when the when they have like the bushel of weird like the shrubbery and they like rub it on the T-Rex's balls. And <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> Bingo Star, right? Yes, we go. The fly. Yeah. He's sleeping. The fly lands on him. <laughs> no, never, really, you're my best friend right now. <laughs> I literally on, like, this will, that will be short lived. One over to Izzy's, like, what is? <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> my mind is blown that you mentioned that movie. <laughs> my mind, he, he looks like I'm sorry, Paul looks like Ringo. Sorry, in fucking that movie. <laughs> Google oh, it. Yes. Google it. <laughs> <laughs> you did. Oh it. shit. <laughs> Listen to the star power. If I'm remembering this correctly, oh, it, Shelley Long, uh, Shelley Long, yep. Dennis Quaid, yes, uh, uh, it's Ringo Starr, yep, uh, Lyle Alzado, number seven, yes, Raiders, <laughs> yes, that that old guy that was an old guy in every fucking movie. Uh, yeah, who uh, I can't remember who the fuck you know, that is. You know who I'm talking about, though. If you saw the picture, oh yeah, that guy. But, but Ringo Starr met his wife, I believe, on. On Caveman, Barbara Bach. Yes, Barbara Bach. Yeah. Well, that that was that was Lana. Lana. Yeah. Mm, Lana. Fucking awesome. It's it's that doo doo. Lana. Yeah. No, what? The, the, the Chinese guy that spoke English. <laughs> I, I do not remember that element. Uh, there's a, there's, a, there's a some they were end up walking through like dinosaur shit, and one of them goes doo doo, the other one goes caca, then the Asian guy goes shit. <laughs> I don't remember that part. I just remember loving that movie. I the weird uh, egg, the pterodactyl egg that they eat. They eat a poached egg or some yep, shit. Yep, yep. Hell, when they discover fire. That's right. Are you the? Are you and I the only people that saw this movie? Or no, I saw I it. I saw it. I saw I it. So. Year, I mean, it's been years, but yeah. Love it, Paul. Can you do simple math? Are you? Uh, oh, uh, I am. <laughs> all right, I'm all done. But all wait, right, hold, on, only, hold on, hold on, hold on. Not only am I all done, but I actually have it so I can tell you everybody's picks. I could. Scored the most points. Who scored the least points? We're good. Okay. Uh, here, here's a uh, young Kyle um, in the chat room says, "Damn, they just like Yahtzee Izzy. scores. Damn, they just <laughs> dog and Izzy for his gay boy love of poison as they should." 
Wow. First of all, first of all, uh, whoever you are in the chat saying negative things, first of all, I, 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 I celebrate uh, the, the gay community and there is <laughs> nothing wrong. If you are in love with poison as much as I, I would, Brett is a very handsome man. Oh. I would uh, change my name to Chief Chuggincock. I would join, uh, <laughs> and I would live happily ever after. I mean, if you had to pick a cellmate, Brett would be the right. If you're going in, if oh, you're yeah. going in for yeah, life, yeah. I, I I go Brett. We, that's what we do the next round table. Should be pick your pick your glam rock cellmate. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, Brett played a fugitive, so he ever played a prisoner. That's, tr so that's true. Had, that's true. He's, he had experience. This None of us has seen Brett's true scalp in many years but i want to tell you it's a short long it's just long here i have a photo of it just like it's, this, guys. It's, it's full rocky horror picture oh yeah yeah well, well when i had big john uh big john murray on like when i first started the show i asked him about because he was brett's personal security on fucking uh on rock everything rock of love <laughs> on everything and i asked him about about, about the wig and he started laughing and he goes Brett's gonna kill me but it's the best hair extensions that money can buy and I'm not knocking it by the way because oh. God knows I wish that I had I could afford his golden mane right, right? but I, I gotta tell you uh, you know he's a very handsome man so you know no one should be digging on whatever your sexual preference I, I did a um, I did a poison cover story on the um one of their tours that they one of their headlining tours i can't remember i think it was the glam slam glam i don't remember which one it was but um after at the end of, i went on the road with them and at the end of the tour they called big john was like hold on you're not allowed in the dressing room and i was like well he goes just hold on you're not allowed in yet they're gonna tell me when you can come in and i'm like okay and then he goes make sure you have your camera and he lets me into the dressing room they were all all four guys butt ass naked with socks on cock like red hot chili peppers but brett had nothing up top. Like he had, he just, he didn't have like ah. the, he didn't have the bandana that he always has on. So it was just like natural hair and socks. And they're like, that's your photo. You can't print it anywhere ever. But that's, I was like, ah. All right, uh, I, I'm at, I'm at, it has to bounce. So let's get to these, uh, let's get so to So here's, finals. here's uh, the highest scores. Uh, Amit and Chad both gave Cinderella a total of 24 overall points. The lowest score anyone got anywhere was 15 points, Chad for Poison. The final results in order, Cinderella, 113 total points, Warrant, 102 total points, Poison, 85 points. So I guess wow. Jared will mark on that one. My, my God, he, he's wrong, King. The, the Lionheart's wrong. Well, the, the second, the second the, like the, you know, their follow-up records, I bet it, I bet it would flip to poison Cinderella. Well, no, maybe it could be. I don't know. You no. know what was weird though? We got the most excited about Heaven. Heaven was the most unanimous song where we all lit up. Heaven just lit us all up. Well, Heaven, that, uh, heaven and Heaven and uh, Save Me. Yeah. And yeah, yeah Heaven, it's even though I didn't and vote Catra for Catra did, so. We, actually, we unanimously agreed on two Warrant songs being the first song, and those are the only things we all agreed on. So huh. it was yeah. interesting. There were two Warrant songs. So, um, tracks eight and four, Four, so it would have been heaven, and I think sometimes she cries. Do you think that? Yeah, because that somehow Brett using his DJ superpowers, Sven Gali, to all of us to make unanimous decisions. <laughs> I, you know, you know, and 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 I love that the biggest word in any of these songs, by the way, is suburban skies. As a kid, suburban. I think the biggest word in any of the songs. You might, is yes, you might be right. Suburban. Perpetual, I had to look up as a kid priest. You know, I, I learned my whole vocabulary from metal. So, but in this scheme, I think suburban, when I was listening, I said, that's a fucking big ass word, man. That's a big ass word, right? No bigger word than suburban. Oh, uh, Scotty, Scotty from Canada checking in. He says, uh, night songs with a whole bunch of exclamation points and screw you, Jericho. All right. <laughs> Listen, I should not be opening up my dumb trap to even to even joke around by saying I want to get into a cage match with Jericho. I resist. <laughs> I resist that. How, however, we just took a dump on him, so there's that. Yeah, we did. We <laughs> did. We did. But now that Although, you, you know what? I am wearing a poison. Sh I'm wearing an wow. poison shirt. Hey, we're not dismissing the love of poison. No one is. I love that first record. However, when you do it like this, 
Yeah. It's oh, yeah. It's, and again, it's I love that record too. It's just it's wow. Yeah. It's all right. If we were gonna do the follow up records, starting with Poison, though. Okay, who who else would be in that category? Would it be like Doctor Feelgood, Poison? Because they're that's well, Doctor Feelgood's not the follow up though. Doctor Feelgood's, I mean, Doctor Feelgood's like a Joshua Tree. It would be it would be um Cherry Pie, Cherry Pie, Poison, yeah, Long Cold Winter. It would just if we that's were just, a good one. Poison, not the same band. Sorry, if it was Poison, because their follow up has every what's what, every what, rose. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if we were just starting with Poison versus Blank and Blank. Of that time, it would be Doctor Feelgood. No, no, oh, oh, not, no. So not necessarily sophomore albums. Just the other relevant album at that year. Of oh, that, okay. that time. So what would it, it be? actually maybe these three bands in order? I'm not even kidding. Yeah. See what yeah, I not, think is no, because if you're going to do the biggest bands of that era, you have to include Bon Jovi, oh, Motley yeah. Crue, and Def Leppard. But the, yeah. the thing is, the thing is, Poison to me offered you a lifestyle. That sounds really questionable. Whereas <laughs> War, War, Warrant, Warrant and Cinderella were cool, but they didn't offer you a lifestyle. It's like the difference. Okay, between Brent, I'm going to agree with you. It's like the, it's like Guns N' Roses. Yes. Poison and Guns N' Roses both offered a lifestyle. I yes. agree with you on that. Thank you. Thank you. That is so weird to ever mention Poison and Guns N' Roses in the same sentence in well, terms of offering a I think, I think part of the problem. They did. Uh, you know, it's really an offering an alternative lifestyle? You're thinking that's weird? I mean, I mean crew changed my lifestyle every year. Okay, you got to be in the devil oh, now. Now you have to be goodness. in the glam. Now you have to be in the motorcycles. Now you have to be in the strippers. There was a, like a lifestyle crew offered you every year. Yeah. New lifestyle, every album. Poison followed the crew. That's that's let's be real. Or I mean, did Motley Crue follow the poison? So I think the problem, Warrant followed poison just by years. Warrant followed poison. That's Actually, I'm not idea. so wait a minute. I'm not so sure about that because by the time you get to Theater of Pain, poison was already huge. If you think about the jump between Shout at the Devil and Theater of Pain, image wise, with poison coming out in the middle of that. Yeah, I'm not so sure. That's and Warren's probably way easy to wrap your head around four guys and five guys. Hard to latch your head around as a, as a lifestyle. Five guys. I know Guns N' Roses, yes, but four guys, Bobby, CC, Brett, Ricky. I, I mean, like, I Warren, too that. many names, too I, many faceless guys. I, I don't understand where you're even going with that. I, I don't, I, I never judged a band by the they had. Well, I want to leave you so with- By that logic, Trans-Siberian Orchestra sucks. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Okay. okay. I'm with this, Izzy. Right. Yes. I, I have to leave, and I don't want. I don't want to leave. First of all, I'm gonna have to walk to my next ex destination because I'm so so, so shit faced. <laughs> you mean upstairs? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, I know because you're not leaving the house. Here's here's what I I want to uh, uh, ask you to do. Okay, Vixen, right? Oh, oh boy. Versus Lita Ford. Okay. Versus Fiona. If you want to throw Femme, in like, oh what no, Femme Fatale. Yeah, you're going Fiona? No, we got to go Femme Fatale. You want to do like Warlock, or you know, or, that's actually a fair one. I mean, like Girl I, School. How about Girl School? What do you mean from Britney Spox? Girl, Britney? No, no, the band Girl School. Am I? I, I don't know that They're I. They're like a British heavy metal chick band. This is Chad. Thank you. I'm gonna ask my <laughs> oh, idea. <laughs> Girls school when I when I leave this show. I feel like you're missing somebody. Vixen, Lita, Femme Fatale. There was another. Femme Fatale. You could throw. But that in, wasn't all girls. No, that was just another Lorraine. bigger one. We were missing. You could throw in Heart, but Heart's too good, and they would win every time. But yeah, that's, that's uh, classic rock. Yeah, well, I, I want to do the metal like the you know, Well, no, this is the fucking band. Doro and Warlock is pretty. Um, oh, oh dude, I. I'm gonna take it off, take it off. Uh, the Donna's. See, the Donna's, you Donna's that's the 90s. Yeah, you're getting into punk rock. Not that they're. Right, I yeah. Mean, yeah. That but girl look, school and Donna's girl, a little all, punk. all girl bands are so fucking few and far between that what were you supposed to fucking do? I love You them. just say Lita Ford wins. I don't I disagree. I, I don't know about that. Yeah. Well, Vixen, I, like, Vixen will never Vixen win because they don't win. I wrote a bio for them and they never paid me. So screw it. <laughs> I, I would go, look, and I would go. I, I'm sorry. It takes a lot for me to say that, but pay your bills. Okay. Here, here's the show. I don't want to do trickster versus <laughs> uh, like fucking, I, I don't know, Brittany Fox, who I fucking, I do not like. And like, uh, I don't know. Really, you don't go Britney Fox and you love Cinderella. I, I'm just, I thought I, I, I put. Oh, no. come on. It's not even the same thing. No. You don't think Long Way to Love's a great song? I think it's such a great song, man. Yeah. Also, 
I might, I, other people might like Great White, but I just can't. There's no wow. pop that can. Wow. Not Great, Great White. I mean, Britney Fox. Britney Fox. Long way to look. They both suck is what I'm saying to you. Okay. Okay. I, <laughs> Fox, I, I actually Ooh. don't hate Britney Fox. I feel like they are, they rip off Kiss and Cinderella equally. Well, Cinderella and Britney Fox, that. they, they came up at the same that, time, right? traded members. That's well, like, they were, right. yeah, they were like, he was, no, in, they were, he yeah, was they in were, Cinderella. They were in the yeah. Yeah, Incestuous. They were in the scene together. Yeah. They but, were in the um, band together. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was, I have to, I have to leave and I'm, no, I'm really sorry. Izzy, Don't I love you. Uh, Britt, I'll see you in therapy. All right. <laughs> uh, <Dad. laughs> Ahmed, thank you very much. Ahmed, check I'll out see you rage. Nice meeting you, man. Check out, oh. uh, check out Ahmed's, uh, the, the, uh, the Zappa movie on his father, Frank Zappa. And check him out every Thursday night at 6 p.m. Hotel California time on Sirius XM 106 volume on Rock Tales. Happy New Year's, Ahmed. Thank you, guys. Happy New Year's, man. Wow. Anytime, the second they open up Rage, Rajay, as I like to call it. Yes, I'll be the I'll be the guy fully helicoptering, and all of all <laughs> people that know what I'm talking about, know what I'm talking about. <laughs> full erect penis to whatever they're doing, oh. uh, spinning my dong around. I have no problem with that. Uh, like donger needs food. <laughs> wow. Listen, man, I'm, I'm I'm fucking wide open, bro. Okay, guys, I love right. you. Oh, oh shit. Enjoy your sushi. <laughs> bye bye all. Bye bye. See you, man. Oh no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You spill fucking liquor, you idiot. Yeah. Paul, where did you where did you grow up? Because I grew up in Jersey. Where did you grow up? Are you talking to me? Yeah. Uh Connecticut. Okay, okay. Yeah, I was uh Eastern Connecticut. So like my like New Haven was my the New Haven Coliseum was my New Haven, Hartford, Long Island Coliseum. Those were the three that I did the most. Okay. I had the Meadowlands and yeah. Yeah, I did was, the Meadowlands for whatever reason. I went to Nassau a lot more than the Meadowlands. I don't know why, but I did. Yeah. I think because of the intimidation of driving on 95. Like it okay. was easier to do the Merritt Parkway to the Long Island, but. Yeah. When you were, when your parents, when you weren't supposed to be going that far, you figured you had less chance of getting caught if you went to Long Island than totally, if you went to totally. New Jersey. Yeah. Well, I, I always tell people. Have to cross I, the bridge. I, I, I've seen Cheap Trick and Ted Nugent more than anybody I've ever seen because I wasn't allowed to go to concerts in like eighth grade, but they played the amusement park, Great Adventure. So I could say I was going to the amusement huh. park and go to see the concert. And it, somehow I yeah. saw I saw Alcatraz open up for Nugent and just saw Ingve was like, what the fuck is that? Nice. Yeah, we had our park was uh, Riverside. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, in Aguam. And I saw Patty Smythe with Scandal there. That was oh, the only show man. I ever thought it was. <laughs> okay, so, uh, walked in, walked past it just as she was doing Warrior. I was like, oh, oh. my God. That's no. All right, what so are you this drink? is what we're going to do. Um, we're going to end this the show. What are you we're going to end the show. Um, you guys, uh, we are going to... Um, now, well, I ran out of Jack. I have a bottle of Maker's Mark, but I decided to go with uh, a little screwball for something a little. Because uh, I just, I just thought I'm going to get up at the next break and get a screwball, so I'll be joining you. On oh, the there you go, there you go. So if uh, you guys want to hang around, um, I'm going to play at the end of the show uh, a song by DB Curtis uh, in honor of my fallen friend. Um, and uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Then I'm going to, after that's over, I will post the uh, the Zoom thing in the chat. Or at, yeah, I'll put it in the chat and I'll put it on the Facebook page. So if you guys want to hang around and talk to some of the listeners, or if you want to go do what you're gonna do, you can do whatever you fuck you guys want to do. But I'm gonna open up the uh, the Zoom to some uh, some listeners. I want to come think, in and have I a think, drink. I think Rico would rather have me talk to strangers than actually talk to her. So I think we should be all right. All right. Yeah, cool. I can. I, I got about fifteen or twenty minutes. I'm good. All right. Cool. Uh, you guys want to promote anything before we bounce, uh, Britt? I have Metal Social Sundays on Twitch. It's twitch.tv backslash Metal Social Sunday. It's a Sunday uh, metal show. It's a lot of fun. I got to have you guys on. It's a, you were on, Izzy. Yeah, dude, it's it's great. It's a blast. Yeah, yeah. I had a fucking blast. Chadwick. Uh, Devilscrownmix.com for your Bloody Mary needs and your dry rub if you're going to be out barbecuing anytime. It's fucking delicious. And New Faster on its way very, nice. very soon. Nice. Sooner than later. That nice. Can sh I can Don't shockingly say soon. that. Sooner than later. Don't go too soon. No, exactly. Not, Not too right. soon. Paulie, uh, you got anything to uh, throw out? 
I am, uh, yeah, I'm advising bands not to go too soon. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. No, uh, trust me, know, Paul, we're still on, no. Paul, we're still on Tammy time, so don't worry. Still on Tammy time, so you, so you, that should work out perfectly. Give us all about exactly. Eight months. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, you know, just it's yesterday was like the first official day back in like heavy duty managing. So you know, now it's it's back in the grind. The, the guessing the guessing grind we do have we do have a cool thing um uh coming it's going to be in like a couple weeks we're going to be launching this album this vinyl compilation i've been working on so i'll i'll keep you posted you can plug it when it happens because there's going to be a kickstarter campaign but it's a cool thing all right so on behalf of uh dj brit Britt Panella, Blackboard Jungle, on behalf of Chad Stewart, Faster Pussycat, Motocrice, and a ah, contribute to Ace Freely, and on behalf of Paul Gargano, Metal Edge Magazine. And uh, Ahmet Zappa, who uh, had to bounce a little bit early for family time. Um, you guys um, in the uh, on the show right now, please be quiet because your, uh, your mics will be on during this thing because it's just on the same fucking channel as a sound flower gimmick as I'm going to play this song. Um, my name is Izzy Presley. What I lack in talent, I make up for in cock. Here is four. Oh, Kurt. Fucking Kurt. Miss you, brother. This is his band, DB Curtis. The song is called Vagabond King. We'll see you next week. Swinging to a different beat.